Hey buddy and welcome. So here are my new RST Omega 26 inch T and L uh, coil suspension shocks. I'll put a link down below for the specs and everything. You can read that. But these are coil suspension shocks with a compression hydraulic lockout system that has a clicker system to it. So it's nice and easy to tell that it's in place. And then your preload for your spring. And these fit on very nicely. I was actually surprised I didn't need to file out the axles to accommodate my hub mower. They actually, the hub mower just kind of slid in and it was fine. And it has tons of space between the wheel and the uh, extension um, port pieces. And it still can allow for the disc brake rotor to work. So I might have a rotor on there later in the future. But yeah, runs nice and cool. Uh, the only difference between my old ones, my old Rock Shock, and these is this is a steel steer tube, and that was a aluminum. These are 30 millimeter uh, stanchions, uh, not travel stanchions, 30 millimeter wide extensions. Um, still 100 millimeter in travel wise, but pretty awesome. And the brakes, as you can see, and disc brake. And here is my Rock Shop fork, which is the aluminum steel steer tube. And the broken crown piece. Now, this is more broken than what it was before. Um, the crown was only a hairline fracture broken on the bottom but it ran very nicely. I did use it uh, quite a bit. Um, didn't take it off-road. I just mainly did like speed runs and went around the block. And that's mainly because um, I knew they weren't gonna really completely break down and go crazy on me because I was using a bolt-on axle system versus a quick release, which gives more strength across the board for the entire fork. So it puts, it relieves the pressure from the entire crown and puts it into the middle and the entire fork uh, lowers so the strength is much more even with the entire low and top area. <clears throat> so it gives it much more stiffer than using a quick release wheel does. But uh, yeah, worked pretty nice. I, I actually like the air suspension tuning system. Even though it was kind of weird uh, to kind of read this information that's on it because um, I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but it says, oh, my camera focused for a second there, but it says that, um, doggone it, now it's not going to register anymore. So it says for rider weight to be a hundred and eighty pounds uh, for a hundred and twenty millimeter. A uh, hundred to a hundred and twenty millimeter is a hundred and twenty psi. For eighty millimeters, you're doing a hundred and forty to a hundred and sixty. So I was like, what? What the heck? Why would I need more pressure for the 80 millimeters? So, either way though, I put it on 100 to 130 PSI for the entire fork system and it ran pretty well. Um, the only thing is I don't think this has any kind of, uh, the lockout has any kind of pressure uh, damping because I know there's a rebound and I know there's the air chamber system, but um, a lot of, this sometimes would be like a compression uh, system that would also churn and lock out at the same time like this bike does, where you can decrease the amount of uh, hardness this has and then completely lock out. Because every time when I would just basically just get unlocked and then do my uh, suspension, 
it would still feel the same. It wouldn't feel any change, like be harder or soft, softer, depending on where the wheel was. So this doesn't seem like it has any compression uh, damping system to it. So this is just basically seems like it's fully unlocked no matter where it is to basically locked. So it's kind of funky. And there's also something that they have for this system that I guess is patented on across the board for all their other system is even though this is locked out that there is that um, uh, impact uh, relief system. So even though the system is locked completely and it's not as hard as this, like this, when this is locked, it feels like basically a rigid fork. It's completely locked out. It's not going to um, undo itself. But this, on the other hand, still has a slight smudginess to it when it's locked in, uh, locked out. Um, but when you go like over a bump, it will still kind of compress. Like if you do a heavy impact, it'll go. It'll sound like it releases air and then it'll go whoop. And then it's come, it gives that smooshiness again, but it doesn't go completely all the way down. So it's a little weird. <clears throat> but it was okay. But um, yeah. Although I don't think it's worth 250 bucks though. Uh, <laughs> considering the fact that these are almost exactly the same kind of system to it, except it's coil, obviously. And. These were only a hundred bucks. For the coil version of these recon shocks, um, they're 170 bucks. So for the air fork version, you're having to pay 30, like 80 bucks more for air. And there's no difference between the two systems. Um, in the entire ability itself. They're using aluminum steer tubes and magnesium uh, lowers. So it's like, hmm. So I'm paying 80 bucks for air. Interesting. So anyways, thank you guys for watching and peace out.